Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee, and in this video, I want to take you through the servicing of a cistern in a Abacus 1.18 meter wall hung WC frame. Now, a lot of people find this a bit of a mystery, but it really is the most simple thing you could ever do. I've become a huge fan of these because one thing, you don't need to take any tools in, and the other thing is that all the servicing can be done through this cover plate. So you haven't got to start messing around trying to take cisterns off or anything like that. So the first thing is we remove the cover plate, which is really simple. It just springs up and off it comes. So the next thing is we remove these two flushing rods simply by turning them anti-clockwise. You can hear the click taking them out. Now I will just say at this point that you can see that some segments on here and that is to allow you to shorten the rod when it's installed according to the tile thickness. Now some people don't bother, they just put those in and what that can do is foul the back of a system so it doesn't operate properly. So if you find that, if you find that somebody's saying they're pushing the buttons and it's not working properly, it may simply be that all you've got to do is break that segment off, put the rod back in and that's the job done. But that's something you'll find out. Now, the next thing we do is to take these two bolts off there and then that gives us the debris plate. Now sometimes you find these debris plates have been thrown away. The installer hasn't even bothered putting it back and it's always a good idea to have that in place because during the construction everything you, you find all kinds of things, wood shavings, MDF, all kinds of rubbish goes down inside there. Now I will say at this point that a lot of problems with these systems can be solved simply by taking the parts out, giving them a good clean and putting them back again. It's actually quite rare that you need to go and order spare parts for it. So we'll just take you through that bit now and you can see exactly how I take this apart, clean it out, put it back together and then hopefully that's the job done. Now the next part is the siphon cam bracket which is very easy. Just push that button in at the bottom, lift it up and take it out. And you can see that that's got two rocking mechanisms on. They should be in place working. So now we can simply isolate the water on this isolating valve up here. That can actually be adjusted to reduce the flow rate. And then the hose here, you'll probably find that you won't need a wrench to undo it because I'll show you why. The seal is actually made on this little rubber o-ring here which pushes in so it doesn't actually help to crank that up tight. You do see some plumbers who think oh I've got to give that a good old tighten. I've even seen plumbers who have put things like Boss White on it to try and seal it. The o-ring so long as it's clean will do the job. So the next bit I'm going to take out is the float valve which is in here Now you might just be able to see there's a small lever at the back there. You can hear it click and that slides out, it's a back slot on the back plate there that that slides into and clicks in. So now we've got the whole float valve assembly, very familiar to a lot of people and the adjustment on that float valve would be up and down simply by turning up, a lot of plumbers know that and it's pre-adjusted so you shouldn't actually need to adjust that height at all anyway. So now we really are getting there, the next bit I want to take out is the actual siphon itself and again just press the click plate in at the back and turn it round through 90 degrees. Now just here this will only come in and out one way and I really do urge you at this point not to be too rough with it because some people with these parts they just start trying to force them out. Nothing in this system should be forced. It all fits in place and provided you're just a little bit patient with it in the way you get it out you will find that you'll be able to remove all the pieces without any damage or anything. Now you can see those parts just fold back up like that. Now when we look at this we can obviously see there's a rubber seal around the bottom here which is obviously what stops the water leaking into the pan and in the most part 
they don't need replacing you, you'll be fine and you'll find that that rubber seal there is also intact and the major problem here will be something like lime scale building up over the years any kind of debris anything that's kind of washed through in that way so if you just give this a really good clean up use your descalant fluid or whatever you're going to use clean it off nicely and put it back you'll find that it'll probably work but if you do need to replace it if you need to order a spare part then you can do that directly from the abacus website simply by identifying the part and ordering it direct online now in order to identify the part you need to know the height of the system because they do change according to the height of the system and also if you've got a slimline system then it's a different part again but you can see that you can verify the height of a system quite simply and then we'll just show you how to order it online on your phone while you're in the premises so nothing could be easier so with those parts taken out of the system I can now feel I'm going to put my arm down here and can feel around that there's no lumps of wood lying in there or anything else that somebody's dropped in there. You never know. Sometimes you can find the odd spanner in there if you're lucky. But anyway, we can now take the hose, which is here, and we can turn the water back on and we can give the whole thing a good flush out. Make sure there's no debris. You'll see it coming out into the pan. And once we're happy, get a camera or get a, a, your phone or even a mirror and have a look down inside there. Just check it absolutely clear. I'll just feel it actually. And I feel there's no debris in there. So with that done, we can begin to reassemble the whole thing. So this goes back in exactly the same way as it came out. There is only one way to do it. You can actually put a little bit of silicon grease in the O-ring if you want to just to help the calls but you'll find that there's only one way to get this back in and it just fiddles around oddly enough it's actually easier in some respects to get it back in than it is to take it out it actually self locates in the bottom there so all you've got to worry about is clicking it down into place there and you'll feel that click so the next bit is the float valve which goes back in exactly the same way it came out just check the operation of that everything's good and that float valve will just poke into there and again it's got a plate to locate on the back click into place so then we can just connect up the hose again if you do need to get a new hose if you're worried about this you think it might be leaking then you can get that as a spare part but you know the great thing about this is if that hose ever did leak it leaks inside the system so you would see it coming out in the pan but anyway that goes back in there as I say no need for any wrenches just tighten that up that o-ring will be doing the sealing there we are we're happy with that now we need to put this cam section back in again and again that is a question of locating it in the two arms there but at the same time we need to make sure that those rods there are through into those two eyes so as you go in you just thread those in make sure they're in that goes in that goes down clicks back into place that's firm let's just give that a test yeah that one's working and that one's working so we know that they're free and they're working properly so the next thing we do is we're going to put in the debris plate so the debris plate will go back in two lugs on the bottom push that into place so the next bit is the press panel locating plate which simply goes into there and then the rods go in to fix that into place now the good thing about these they're plastic you know but actually they're better because they don't rust you don't get any corrosion on them at all one clicks up into place like that and the other one goes in and it clicks down that way so great little system I think so flush rods one into each side push those in and then you'll hear it click round that's an indication that you've got them in the right place. Now we can test those before we go any further. Check they're 
free and if they're not free it's only because you haven't clicked them back into place properly. So we know they're all working. So the flush plate's the last thing to go on, push up from the bottom, over the top, and it's on. So that in a nutshell is how to service this abacus system. And although the systems vary in height and also depth, and there are different parts involved, the principle for doing this is exactly the same.